Amen. Second Timothy chapter four, and uh, this morning here, I'm telling you, we need to, we need to as much as we can. I hope you're faithful in all seasons of life. You know, life has got seasons. Amen. It really does. You know, some of you say, "Boy, I love summer." Amen. Some will say, "I love fall." Maybe love the colors. Some say, "I love the snow." I love the winter. I love spring. I like life springing up. You know, we all got our favorites, amen? But regardless of your favorite, you live in this climate, you got to go through all four. Isn't that right? We are in it. So you can't change that. Amen? So, you know, we got to get used to it and kind of allow God to show us that life is just like that. Even in our walk with Christ, amen? There is ups and downs, or at least we perceive them as ups and downs, but all things work together for good. That's what the Bible says, <laughs> even though we don't see it. Amen. So 2 Timothy chapter uh, 4, verses 1 through 8. Let me read this passage. Very familiar to most of you this morning. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Watch this. Be instant in season and out of season. Hmm. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch, thou in all things endure inflictions. Hmm, that's a, that's a hard, day. Eh? Do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. And here's like, you know, this letter is Paul's last words, amen, before he died for his faith. For I am now ready. Are you ready? Are you ready to meet Jesus? To be offered at the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Amen. Let's pray. Father, bless your word. Bless our time together this morning. Speak to hearts, meet with needs. Lord God, Lord, I pray for those. Lord God, maybe their, their faith has been wavering. Those who are believers, Lord, maybe they think about what we just read, think about the song we just sung. Lord God, God, maybe there be a revival in their hearts this morning, Lord. God, you would restore the joy of their salvation. Help your people today. God, we live in troublesome times and perilous times. Help us today to be that light and salt for you, Lord God. Help us today. And for those who don't know you, Lord, our prayer Lord God, is for them to come to that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Help them to know and understand what it means to be saved. So God, we want your will and way to be accomplished. Now bless, may we bring honor and glory to your name. That, oh, what a lovely name. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, you may be seated. I like that, you may be seated. <laughs> amen, praise the Lord. I think this message will be broken up this morning and tonight. So if you can't come back tonight, I guess you'll have to watch it online. But there's, I, I've looked at it and I thought, I, I thought maybe I could do all of this, but I can't. I can't. And uh, there's no hurry. You got anywhere to go? Amen. Don't you think this is important? It's not my words, it's God's words. Amen. So let's look at some things here. You know, I was thinking back, Hazen and Brother Don, I, when we did this chapter in Pastoral Epistles, and I uh, was reminiscing, uh, and again, about the things we talked about back then. And uh, you know what? Uh, it's, no, you know, I never get tired of reading passages in the Bible. There's a lot I don't understand in this Bible. Amen? And I'm sure the same must be with you. And, uh, but I know it's true, and I don't have to, I should not doubt it, amen? And we know that doubt doesn't come from the Lord, amen? So anyway, 2 Timothy 4, verse 1. So let me go through the passage, and because there's some important truths that are so, so applicable for us at this hour, in our, this point in history. 
in our, in our world, in our country, in our province, in our city. Amen. So here he says in 2 Timothy 4, verse 1, I charge thee. He's charging. Amen. I remember when I was sent out from Niagara Falls, I had an ordination council. They quizzed me, questioned me. They knew my testimony. I gave it. And uh, they asked me all the questions. They're just throwing questions at you. And, uh, you know, the Bible says you shouldn't be a novice. That's what the Bible says in First Timothy. Not that I knew everything. I'm st I've learned so much. I've learned so much since 1994. I'm serious. I've learned so much more. When you're in position as pastor, you know, out of necessity, you got you got to prepare. <laughs> <laughs> There's preparation involved in preaching and teaching. You've got to read and read. I can understand why in the book of Acts they said, you know what, not that feeding the widows and their affliction is not important, but they said, you know what, we can, we can, we can choose seven among us, amen, that can do that. But he said, but we should be given to ministry of the word and prayer. That's what he said back then. Not that all of that, cleaning, doing you know, all these basic things. But you know what? It's interesting when you do that passage that even in the Luke, when he wrote the book of Acts there and recorded that, the men who fed the widows had to be spiritual. We think, oh, we'll give that to some people who are not spiritual. You got it all wrong. Everything in this church, I don't care if you sweep a floor, mop a floor, clean a toilet, you need to be spiritual cut the grass, whatever it is you're doing. Like, oh, you don't have to be spiritual to do that. Just up here, you know, in the pastor and the teaching and the preaching ministry. Where do you get that from? <laughs> it's not in the Bible. You don't find that. So we think, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't think about that. Amen. I have. We don't think. We need to think. We need to think. Everything's important in this church. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for helping out, fixing. We need to do more. I mean, man, there's things... We'll talk more about that in our meeting. We got to finish downstairs. We got to go. We can't. We got to. We got to move forward and try to complete these projects. We got. We got to finish. Amen. God's provided. We need to do the job. It's been challenging, off and on, lockdown, no lockdown. That's hard. It can't. It's hard to get things done, and, you know, and organized. And people are afraid and full of fear. Amen. We're just. It's like wow. But amen. We're going. We're moving forward. We're going to move forward. We're going to do whatever we can within God's, you know, help and strength and within whatever the government can give us to do, amen. So he says this, the quick and dead, amen. He shall judge the quick and dead at his appearing at his kingdom, amen. You know what? I'm telling you something here. The Bible tells us, you know, someday we're going to be resurrected up, and I can't wait for that day, amen. If you're dead, uh, uh, dead uh, you die in Christ before uh, that event of the rapture takes place, or if the rapture, amen, <laughs> I kind of wonder what the, how that's going to be, amen. We're going to be transformed. I believe it's over in Philippians chapter 3, I think verse 20 or something like, or 220, I can't remember. Uh, it talks about that this, God's got to transform and change this vile body. That's going to happen someday, amen. That's going to happen someday. So, And then he says there, he says, he tells us here in verse 2, preach the word. So in verse 1, he says, I'm charging you. So I got a charge when I got ordained. The preacher stood up. He preached Acts chapter 20. Lord willing, if we don't go to it this, this, this morning, we'll go to it tonight. Because when you go in that, Paul says, I've been with you at all seasons in Acts chapter 20, verse 18. So I'll, I'll see it where, how we do with this passage. But he says, preach the word. He's charging. Amen. You're going to go out. You're going to talk to folks about the Lord. You're going to minister to people. You're going to, with God's help and strength, establish a local New Testament church. Amen. Man, I'll tell you, there's a lot. There's a lot to that. You know, it breaks my heart every time I hear of a church failing. And a gospel preaching church, that bothers me. We need more gospel preaching churches. We don't need churches to fail. Amen. That's what we need. And he says to be instant, in season and out of season. How about that? Boy, I tell you, he says, I'm charging you. I'm charging you, Timothy. Timothy's a pastor at, at Ephesus, amen? And, and Paul's saying, I'm charging you. Come on, I want to encourage you, amen? And you know what? I, I get my encouragement, yes, by seeing God work in your life and people's lives and see God do that, amen? There's many ways, but 
there's times I just got to encourage myself in the Lord like David did. Serious, just by studying the word, reading, and I listen to preaching, and I go, man, I need a time. Sometimes, if you were with me when I'm alone in the car and I'm listening to preaching, I'm shouting in there. I'm praising God. I'm, tell, I'm being honest with you. I say, hey, man, boy, that was good. Oh, I needed that today. Who's preaching to me? I read the word. I feed myself so I can feed you. That's what Acts 20 talks about. Take heed to yourselves. And then feed the flock which God had made you overseers over. That's what the Bible says. Amen? That's what we're supposed to do. Amen? You say, I've been saved for 50 years. Bless God, you still need to be fed. I've been saved five years. You still need to be fed. You know what the sad reality is? We don't all feed ourselves. You know, God wants us to feed. You need to feed yourself when you're not around God's people in the services in the house of God. Amen? So, you need to do that, but you need, you need a second and third witness because sometimes, not that I got it down pat in every passage of Scripture here, but, oh, I never saw that before. I listen to preaching, and I say, I never heard that before. Never. Let me check it. Let me study that a little bit. Iron sharpens iron. We need each other. That's why it's important, amen? See, in here, you know, everybody's got, you know, we're sitting here, you got your Bibles or your tablets or your screens as long as you don't get notifications don't get sidetracked don't play any games amen i won't ask you what you're doing at home when you get when you do this but anyway you're kind of stuck here aren't you you kind of focused amen i won't keep you too long i know it gets warm in here but he's charging them preach it preach it preach the word preach the word amen i think some people in some churches have lost sight of verse one got to charge people Man, come on, folks. Let's go. Let's move forward. Amen. Let's go forward for Jesus Christ. Amen. Be instant. You know, I've got to be ready to preach. I don't have anything prepared. Just open the Bible. Have you read it? Talk about something you read this morning. What are you going to say? I, see, we got to, you know, we say, I don't know what to, i got to make sure it's all prepared. Are you reading the Bible? You got something that you can share with someone else that you may think they may not know? How about the gospel? Let's start there and then go down the list. Just open the Bible. Say, I don't know. Open it anywhere. Start reading it. Say, Holy Spirit of God, help me. You know, just like I got that little passage in the beginning. Open thou my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Can you pray that? We talked about, we talked about uh, Isaac praying for his wife for 20 years. Can you ask God to open your eyes? Say, God, give me something fresh and new. God, I want to, God, I want to help my wife, teach my wife, and I want to teach my kids. I want to help them, amen, as a father, amen. God, just help me, amen. Moms teaching your kids. Maybe some are homeschooling, some are not, some are public school, whatever, whatever. But listen, we need some. If you think that one service a week is going to get you through the week, you got it all wrong. You got to spend some time in the Bible. You're not going to make it. You're not going to be faithful in all seasons. It won't work. I guarantee it won't work. Hey, man, you lose your fire. You do. You lose your fire. You lose your zeal. Hey, man, you get, you know, you surround yourself all week long. If you're not careful of the choices of social media and news and entertainment, it, it will dampen your spirit for Christ. Got to be careful. Be choosy. You know, like you say, I feel good, Pastor. I got the word today. Amen. Don't throw it all down the drain all week long by engaging in stuff that's tearing down what we just read. Amen. I want to help you today. I want to see God work in your life. Amen. That's what I want. Praise God. You know, praise the Lord. So we got to be ready. I got to be ready. Open the Bible. Someone says, hey, uh, you know, what's it? You're, you're, I understand you're a Christian. Would you explain that to me? If you're saved, you should be able to explain that to somebody else. And if you can't, there's a problem. Well, I'm afraid. I'm ashamed. What are you afraid of? What are you ashamed of Christ for? You're afraid of what Christ did for you on the cross? Be instant, in season, out of season. Amen? When we see fruit, Brother Don, when we don't see fruit, Keep on going. Don't quit. Don't give up. Hey, Amen. Just keep on trucking. Keep on going. One step at a time. Maybe it may slow down a little bit, but keep on moving for God. Man, I'll tell you, 
You say, it's tough. Join the club. It is tough. There's challenges, Pastor, in our world. I know that. We're all dealing with it. We're all in it together. We are. You say, I don't know like that. For whatever, it's true. <laughs> we're in this thing together. In the sense that we're experiencing all this stuff. It's going on. Amen? Well, I'll tell you, preaching the Word of God you know what? There's places some missionaries are in, they see very little fruit. And there's some places in our world, in our continent, that they see lots of fruit. But regardless of the results, you need to keep on being faithful. Faithful in all seasons. Faithful in all seasons. Remember this, Brother Don. The seed is good. You got the good seed. We know that. That's a given. But I can't count on the earth, the heart. What is it? What kind of hearts are these people? I don't know. I don't know their hearts. I kind of, maybe through the reaction, might take a guess at where their heart is. Amen? But the reality is, you've got good seed. There's nothing wrong with the seed. Sow the seed. Amen? Give people the gospel. Give people the word of God. People need the word of God. They don't need you to share the same message that they're getting all week long in the news media and social media. If you're a Christian, you ought to be sharing the Word of God with people on social media. Amen? That's what you should be doing. Man, let's encourage each other. Man, let's, well, we just like, like they did in Acts 17, tell a new thing. It was a big, it was a big thing. Let's tell everybody. But everybody else knows the new thing because we're all connected with all this crazy electronics. Let's give something new and fresh. You say, the Bible, it's two, that book, this book was completed by the first century. It's 2,000 years old. Amen. And for some people, they've never heard much of what we have in this book. It would be new to them. I didn't know that. A lot of misrepresentation of churches, pastors. The Word of God is misrepresented. That's a hate book. No, it's not. It's not a hate book. This is the book that God showed his love to this whole world. The Bible tells us in Psalm 97, 10, ye that love the Lord hate evil. You love God? That's Psalm 97, 10. You ever read that one before? We should never hate. God says if you love God, you ought to hate evil. Do you hate evil? Come on, it's ruining people's lives. Have you seen that? Have you watched people? Even some Christians. We've seen how it's wrecked their lives. Sin, amen? Sin's dread sway, we sang. Amen? Boy, I'd rather have Jesus. That's what I want. I want Jesus. Thank you, Sister Amanda. She's downstairs for choosing those songs. Amen. And the Bible says in that passage, I see, that's why I know I can't finish this up this morning. <laughs> Verse 2, pre preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all lung, suffering, and doctrine. Notice three things there. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort. Did you know there's two negatives and one positive? Did you see that? Reprove and rebuke. Well, I'd never rebuke anybody. You don't, you don't believe the Bible. We even I quote this a lot. Revelation, I think it's 3.20. You don't need to turn there. I'll just make sure. Revelation 3.20, and the Bible, Jesus says, many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. We don't understand that concept. Well, if, I, if you really love, love your kids, you'll never rebuke them. You'll never correct them. I love them too much to do that. No, you got all wrong. You don't love them. Because Jesus said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. I correct them. When I see that they have bad behavior, I correct that behavior. Parents, grandparents, Amen. But the exhort is the positive. So two, two rebukes, two negatives. Amen. Rebuke, re reprove, and rebuke. With all long suffering and dark, dark, you know, uh, um, uh, doctrine. So the Bible tells us here. So it's important. It's important. Amen. God wants us to be instant, be in season, be out of season. Amen. When it's convenient, when it's not convenient. Inconvenience? Oh, this is an inconvenience. If you let that stop you, you won't do much for God. There are things that in this world that are going to inconvenience. They will not be according to the season. It's too hot. We said six months ago, it's too cold. What did you say? Did you do anything in the spring and the fall if those are your favorable seasons? 
come on, we got to think about this. Do you know what? Tomorrow, I'm not trying to scare you, if the Weather Network or Environment Canada is right, sorry, I'm still stuck on Fahrenheit. I do understand the centigrade, I understand it, but pardon me for giving you Fahrenheit. With the Humidex tomorrow, it's going to feel like 102. It's going to be 88 degrees Fahrenheit tomorrow. From us old, old fogies, you remember that. Pre, pre-metric. <laughs> you remember those days? So we went, what is it, is it five, six years? Six years for Jonas? How old is he now? But my, my brain is so, six years old. Six years ago, we went to Houston. It was like that in May. <laughs> if you lived in Houston, when are you going to tell people about the Lord? When are you going to go outside? Now, it's hot. They have warnings. When we were there, it was constant warning and tornado warnings in May. That's how it is in some places. Some places, there's, you, know, you live in a different places in the world, you get that. What if you live in the northern climates? Amen. So when God gave us instructions, he didn't say, for North America, here's the instructions. For, you know, our northern part of North America, southern part, these are your instructions. No, in season, out of season. That's what he said. Faithfulness in all seasons. Faithfulness in all seasons. It's hot. No kidding. It's stuffy. No kidding. Really, I know, I understand. I'm sweating. You put that mask on? I don't know about you, but man, my, my mouth is all wet within moments. <laughs> I'm serious. I gotta get outside and, whoa, take that off, let's go. Hey man, I, I appreciate you folks sitting here with the mask on. Man, I'll tell you, I just, I'm, it's like, come on. Anyway, sorry, I'm just, but you know what? What we have here is we got good seed, the hearts and lives of people, there's different hearts out there. I gotta look to God and say, God, you promise the fields are white unto harvest. That means somewhere, someplace on planet Earth, there are people who are hungry waiting to come to know Christ. Where are they? Well, if you never open your mouth or never try to engage with anybody, you'll never know, maybe. Now it's possible they may engage first. Amen. But I like that in Acts 8. Philip, the Bible says, he opened his mouth. Well, just let my light shine. I'm not, we're, we're, for, we're for lifestyle evangelism, but we're also for vocal. <laughs> Open your mouth. Live the life. We want lip and life. <laughs> Amen. How's the lip and how's the life today? Is it consistent? You're serving God, living for God? Reprove. What's that? We must tell people the things that are wrong according to God, not according to the government, not according to society or social media, but according to God, the things that are wrong. Rebuke. We must be pointed about it. We shouldn't beat around the bush. We should be very clear. We should be understandable. What is the problem? Amen? When we rebuke, we make sure. We should, yes, deliver that in the spirit of love, in the spirit of compassion. Amen? We need to do that. But we need to do the rebuke. There's a time of rebuke. There's a time of reproving. And we need to encourage people to keep on going through all the seasons of life. What's your season? You know, you may say, well, I'm, we're talking about summer. No, forget that. You personally may be going through a season in your life. What is that? I don't know. You might liken it to one of the four seasons we have in this part of North America, but where are you? You're, you're challenged, you're struggling, you're facing some challenges personally, spiritually, financially, materially, emotionally. Amen? You're going through a season. You know, I like those passages in the Old Testament. And it came to pass. <laughs> I like those. Did you ever see those in the Old Testament? And it came to pass. It, it will pass someday. You say, well, it's been a long time, Pastor. It will pass someday. I know this. When we get to heaven, it's gone. <laughs> Amen. Praise God for that. 
Amen? So with all long suffering, we must be patient. We got to give people time to get things right. We got to get time. How long did it take before you came to know Jesus Christ as your Savior? How many times did you get a gospel track? How many times did your family, your friends, your relatives try to reach out to you? Amen? Was it just one time? That may happen. It has happened. I've seen it happen in my life. But you know, it doesn't happen that way in everyone else's life. Sometimes it takes some plowing and it takes some watering, amen. Oh, we got to keep on working and keep on working and you love them and you care for them. And you know what? You got to keep on going in all seasons. That's what we need to do. Amen, Christians, this morning. Hey, you're saved, praise God. You got kind of the spiritual doldrums, amen. That's the way some Christians are. They're in the doldrums. They're not, they're not making headway. They're not, maybe they're just kind of plateauing there, Amen. It's all quiet. It's like you're sitting in the Atlantic and there's no, there's no wind. And you're a, you're, you got a sailboat. You might have to do some rowing for a while. Amen? Get all the, the, all the shipmates out and start, come on, let's try to move this thing. They get in the little dinghies in front of it and they're pulling the big sailboat. Amen? Some people are in the spiritual doldrums of their life. Maybe that's your season. Maybe God's, listen, for such a time as this, my wife and I keep on saying, you know, we got to get a sign. For such a time as this, you know what? Remember what Esther did. There was a time and a place, and it was that time. Mordecai says, listen, you're a Jew. You're going to find out. You're going to be in a big problem as soon as he finds out. Because he gave Haman all that authority to eradicate the Jews. (laughs) Amen. You better say something. Well, I might die. And then she says, if I perish, I perish, but I'm going to do it. Maybe that's what we need. Maybe that's the kind of attitude we need this morning as Christians. If I perish, I perish. I'm just going to go tell people about Jesus. You know what? I'll put up with the rules and all of that as long as I have freedom to get the gospel. They say, if you do this, you get freedom to tell, talk to people. If you, if you do this, you have freedom to go into nursing homes and talk to people about the Lord. I'll do whatever is necessary to get the gospel out. Amen? That's what I believe. So well, I wouldn't do that. What about someone's soul? For what shall a profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Come on, what's, what's the value of a soul in your estimation? I know what it is in Jesus Christ's estimation. There's nothing, nothing, nothing compared to the value of a soul. Nothing. You can't even compare. Just like we talked about Christ and his lovely name. Can't compare any name. There's no name on this planet Earth. There will be no name except for the name of Jesus that will bow and will confess. Amen. Praise the Lord. With all long-suffering doctrine. Amen. Verse 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap themselves teachers having itching ears. Amen. Teaching, teaching. Amen. Bible. Listen, the Bible says they wouldn't endure it. Notice that. He didn't say they wouldn't hear it. They wouldn't endure it. No, I've had enough of this Bible preaching. I'm, I, that's it. I'm done. Even some Christians are on that page. That's it. I'm done. He offended me again. Amen. I'm telling you, you know what? The numbers on the YouTube go up and down. I don't watch them all the time. I really don't. Just that when I go on the homepage, on the dashboard, it shows you how many people. It goes up, it goes down. Oh, after that message, it went down. Someone didn't like what I preached. So be it. I'm going to preach the word. Doesn't matter. We're not here to gather YouTube subscribers. We're here to get the truth out as long as we have freedom and liberty. And I have questions about how long that's going to take. I have some serious questions over some of the bills that are being pushed through the government right now. Serious. You don't think, well, that sure wouldn't happen. You know what? I really believe this. It's going to get tough. It's really going to get tough, folks. That's why you got to get close to God. But I'll tell you something right now. It may result that you have to come in the building to hear me preach. I'm not saying that's going to happen. You say, well, I don't know about that. That's how we used to do it. You know how they're doing in communist China, North Korea? Out in fields, secret places, middle of the night. I'm not saying that's coming. Who knows? Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. You, you're telling me everything that's contained in this book, people are going to accept and embrace? No, I don't believe that for a minute. And you know what? Some people just will not endure sound doctrine, sound preaching. 
Amen? When I preach and teach the Word of God, I try as much as possible to deliver and, and be consistent with the whole body of truth. To try to rightly divide the Word of God, not to pull Scripture out of context. Understand the big picture in the Word of God. Especially God's plan and program with the nation of Israel and His bride. And they're separate entities. I try to, under, try to understand all these things. Amen? So when I deliver the truth... It's just like when you order a pizza. If we ordered a pizza this morning, you would find that, you know, we start with the basics on the pizza. Set aside gluten-free stuff, okay? Because some have those intolerances. So you put, let's say, hum, we'll have cheese. How many would have cheese? And you got, maybe most people have their hand. We'll have cheese here. Amen? And then you start going down the list. And as you want more items on the pizza, the hands go down. When you deliver a whole wide spectrum of truth from the Word of God, it's like people just will not endure it anymore. They won't. That's what I've found after 27 years of pastoring in Nova Scotia. Not everybody will endure the truth. They'll hear it, but they won't endure it. They won't endure it. Amen? You know what? When people lose their heart, their love and enthusiasm for, for God and His Word... You know what? They begin to endure it. Endure the teaching and the preaching. It's not a joy anymore. <laughs> you stay close to God and say, I can't wait to come through. That's the way I was before I became a pastor. I said, boy, I need that. I was working at Swage Lock in Niagara Falls for 14 years, and I heard enough language that would that blasphemed my name of my Savior, Jesus Christ, and the trash, that talk, and shop talk, and all that, man, I says, I can't wait for church Wednesday night, and I can't wait for church, I need that mid-break, mid-week, man, lift me up, charge in the batteries, amen, so to speak, I need that, I need that on Sunday, boy, I tell you, I look forward, and there was the odd occasion I'd miss church, it was never the rule, it was an emergency, some fittings had to go somewhere, and I, I was the QA supervisor. I had full responsibility in the shop for the quality of everything manufactured. And I had to deal with some things, and I, it bothered me. I didn't want it. We didn't have internet back then. But I did it, and I said, man, I can't wait to get back to church again. I look forward to that. We live in a day where people, they not only won't endure sound doctrine, but they find a church that will sort of speak, tickle their ears. That's having itching ears. They'll tell them what they want to hear rather than what they should hear. That's the world we're living in. I'm not, listen, this is not a message about lifting Ken Parrot up. This is not, make sure you understand that this is not, nothing to do with me. I just want to be faithful to God and his word, and I want to deliver that truth, amen? I'm not saying I'm better than anybody else. I'm just saying what God says here, there are people, they'll heap to themselves, teachers having itching ears, and there's a lot of churches out there like that, unfortunately. Amen? Why would you want to find a church that'll tell you what you want to hear instead of what you need to hear? That's the day and age we're living in. You know, God wants us to enjoy and not endure sound doctrine. You ought to enjoy it. Boy, that was a breath of fresh air. I needed that. Man, after seeing the news feed and social media, which I just, I can't look at too much. Boy, I needed something fresh and new. And by the way, you can get something fresh and new every day, as I've already mentioned in my message, if you want it. The Bible says, verse 4, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Have you seen that? I've seen it. That's not truth. That's not according to the truth. That's a fable. That's a fable. That's made up. People, people are embracing fables. They're pushing away from the Word of God. So I don't like that book. I, I hate that book. I don't like the Bible. You know? They're turning to fables. Fables. Instead of preaching about the world, the flesh and the devil, sticking to the Word of God, they preach on social issues, the environment, hereditary circumstances, your feelings. How do you feel? How do you feel about this? It doesn't matter how you feel. That's the truth. I, I, I will listen, I'll have compassion on, on your understanding and, and, you know, and so forth. But the reality is, if that's the truth, I'm going to try to deliver it in the spirit of love and grace. But if you don't feel good about it, it doesn't mean it's not true. We live in a world where they say, well, I, how do you, they, you know, the reporters on the news, how do you feel about this? And what do you think? How about, thus saith the Lord. What is the truth? Are we going to get the truth here? Or we just want to talk about everybody's feelings. 
and how they feel about stuff and their opinions. We need the truth. We need the truth this morning. Verse 5, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of evangelists, make full proof of thy ministry. We're going to see this. Paul even saw it in the Roman Empire. What do you mean by watch? No sleeping. No napping. <laughs> Are you at your post, so to speak? Are you faithful? In season, out of season, as a pastor, as a preacher. I know this is pastoral, but I understand. But what about you on a personal level as a Christian? Oh, you, you mean you can't sleep? At, no, I'm not saying that. But when it comes to the truth, we need to stand for truth and right. You say, it, it was difficult, and I just, <gasps> we need to speak the truth. Be on your watch duty. That's what Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 16 through 21 talks about. The watchman, the watchman, the watchman. If you're a watchman or you were on the watch on a boat and you fell asleep on your watch, it was the death penalty. Did you know that? You die. God says, you're like a watchman. It's time to watch. Are you watching? Are you alert? Amen. You know what? Isn't it sad sometimes? And I know physically maybe some of us have health problems, health challenges, so maybe we can't stay awake in a service like this because it gets warm and a little bit stuffy and all this kind of stuff. But can I ask you this question? Have you worn yourself up for the world all week long and have you saved anything for God? Have you saved anything for God? Or you just wore yourself out for the world? Amen. Oh, listen, if you work hard, I'm not knocking that. You ought to be a hard worker. And I understand that. And some have to work so much more and maybe two jobs to do this, to pay the bills and to stay on top of things. But what have we saved for God? He says, endure afflictions. Life is full of trouble. Even Job, chapter 5, verse 7, Job 14, 1, the Bible says, you, you were born under trouble. You're born a woman? Life's full of trouble. <laughs> we don't like that. We like maybe trouble, but not full of trouble. That's a cup full of trouble. You say, how come I'm going through trouble? You never read Job? You never read the scriptures? That's what even Jesus said to the Pharisees and the leadership. Did you never read? That's what he said. Amen? And by the way, especially when it comes to the ministry, Endure afflictions. Amen? When, when one can't handle trouble, amen, handle problems. Some people, you know, I, I, I've known pastors. I had one pastor years ago who told me this. He says, man, if it wasn't for dealing with people and their problems, ministry would be great. And I says, you've got it all wrong. The reality is that is the ministry. It's not just standing behind this pulpit and delivering truth. It's dealing with problems in people's lives. People think, you know what some people I've found in the last 27 years? Some people want a, a preacher to preach a message. But when you say, listen, I see some, some things that I, I, I'd like to talk to you about in your home and your family. As soon as you enter into their quote-unquote domain, oh, the fireworks begin. Nope, leave me alone. I don't want your help. But you have to say, that's good preaching. Boy, that's good preaching. But there's problems in your life, in your home, in your family. See, they don't want you to pastor them, but they want you to preach them. That's what I have found. Not in all cases. Some people, they just don't want that. They don't understand the pastoral ministry. They think, oh, that's just standing up here preaching a bunch of messages. No, no, it's more than that. He says there, you know, um, do the work of the evangelist in verse 5. Do you see that there? Pastoring involves reaching the lost. We never must stop reaching the lost. We must never lose our vision for the lost. Proverbs 29, 18 says, so when the people, you know, if the people, you lose your vision, you'll perish. Have you lost your vision? You get so overwhelmed by all the social media, news media, and all the stuff going on in this world that you forgot in the midst of this, there are people who are lost. I look at, I look at people's faces and I say, wow. You can kind of read some of it. You think you could see the worry you can see the anxiety. You could see the, the trouble. And, uh, you know, my wife went in to order some flowers because it was my, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law's, their, their birthdays are a couple of days apart. She went into a florist. I won't say where and what. And she went in, and the woman was full of anxiety. She was afraid. She was just overwhelmed by all of the stuff that's going on with the restrictions and all this stuff. It, it was just like, 
And if you're not careful, you'll misread that. They're just hurting inside, and they're, they're just in a state of turmoil. And meanwhile, by the time she got through that, and she's just, my wife, you know, she seemed to calm down. She says, yeah, let me take your order. Some people just want to get something off their chest. They just want to talk. <laughs> people are afraid. That's the world we're living in, in 2021, on this, on this June 27th. Really, it's, it's, that's the world we're living in. It's people are full of anxiety and worry, fretting. And when you look at that, please remember that. Can you look beyond that and see there's a soul inside there that needs Christ? Amen? Do the work of an evangelist. Amen? Boy, I tell you. Boy, it's so important. Make full proof of thy ministry, he says. Carry through to the end. <laughs> that's what Paul's doing in the letter. Carry right through to the full proof of your ministry. Finish well. How many do we know of? Boy, I can't count. I can't count. I can't count the number of people that are preachers and ministers of the gospel. And I'm not, it's not a statement to lift myself up. I am capable of anything and everything in the flesh. And see them go down. Full proof. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 13, when it talks about obey them and have the rule over you, it talks about consider the end of their conversation, not the beginning. Consider the end of their conversation. That's their walk and their talk. Before you make things and you say, well, that's a wonderful preacher, wait till the end. Then make your statement. How do they finish? That's, that's what Paul's doing here. He's finishing well. He's making full proof. And he's telling Timothy, Timothy, make full proof of your ministry in Ephesus. Finish well, Timothy. How many times have I said that? Finish well. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. Are you going to finish well? Or are you going to succumb even as we read about Esau giving in and selling something, selling out, you know, these young kids here, they sell out their bodies for the world. Amen? Then they realize, what have, I, what have I done? And they think they're stuck in that and they can't get out of it. You can get out of it. That's the world we're living in. They want to rob you of your joy your, and the kids and their virginity and all this stuff. That's what the world wants to do. Mess them up so they're useless for God. They zero in on the young people. Amen? They do that. Verse 6, I know, we've got to wrap up. For I am now ready to be offered... My time of departure is at hand. Nero's about to execute Paul. He's on death row. Why? Because he preached the gospel. That's why. No other reason. You read Paul's letters, you read Peter's letters, you'll find this. Obey the government. Obey the government. But when it came down to something God clearly stated to preach the gospel, he says, I'm sorry, I can't obey that. Even as Daniel of old, when they said you couldn't pray, Daniel said, I'm going to pray as I've done aforetime. time. That means he had done this on a regular basis. He says, when the law was written, he didn't start praying. He had been praying since he was a teenager, since he was growing up, before he was taken from his family to Babylon. Amen. It was in his heart. He purposed in his heart. We need some young people to purpose in their heart, not throw away God. Because of all the stuff the world's pumping into their brains. Man, tell you, we, you say, I, Jesus may come back tomorrow. Amen, I hope so. But if, what if he doesn't for another 10 years? Where are the young people today going to be? I'm now ready to be offered. You know, Paul, boy, I tell you, what an amazing man. I'll tell you, what an amazing man. The Bible tells us. You know how faithful Paul is? It even got to a point where in Philippians 4.22, the Bible says that he had even reached some of Caesar's household. Come on. You've got to think about that. I'm going to die anyway. You can't stop me from preaching. I'm going to tell, keep on telling people about Jesus. You're on death row. It doesn't matter. I'm going to keep on telling. I'm going to die anyway. I'm going to heaven to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. Amen. What are you worried about? He says, I even reached Caesar's house. How about, how about the government household? <laughs> Amen. Provincially, municipal government. What about federal government? I, listen, I believe there's Christians here and there in these different places in government. I believe that. I believe it's tough to stand up for truth and right and not be, I'm telling you, ostracized, <laughs> especially in this world of inclusivity and diversity. You'll still be ostracized if you say anything according to the Bible. 
Serious. That's where our world is. He says, my time of my departure is at hand. There's a time for you, too, for your departure. When is it? I don't know. You may not die by execution because you're a Christian preaching the gospel like Paul is. Amen. But there's a time. What time is that? I don't know. You know, we may never see each other again on this side of heaven. Amen. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm not, you know, I, there's no, nothing I know about anybody here that, you know, that's personal or private that, you know, you're dying of this or that. I'm not, I don't know any of that stuff. But let me just tell you something. You don't know if you're going to live another day or night in this world on this side of heaven. So why don't you do this? I like this. Don't postpone joy. Make this day the fullest you can. Psalm 90, make it count. Make it count for Jesus today. Don't waste this day. You can never reclaim every minute, every hour, and every day you waste. Oh, you can get your things right and get back on track, but this day will pass. This, this hour's gonna pass. We're about 12 o'clock, lunchtime. It's past. Amen? It will be past soon. Amen? Can you enjoy every moment? Amen. Boy, I'll tell you. Paul, you know what? Are we living each day as we're ready to depart? Can you live tomorrow as if this was going to be your day of departure? How would you live it? Would you live it any different than you did? If you look back at today or yesterday, would you, if you knew yesterday was your day of departure to go home to be with the Lord, would you have lived that day any different than you did yesterday? Can you think about that? Listen, you can't change the past, but you can change today, every moment. Amen? It's at hand. It's near. Amen? What's 60? I'm 65. What's 70? What's 80? What's 90? When you compare that to eternity, where all the things you did for Christ will last, it'll count for eternity. Amen? And some of the things you spend a lot of time on may not count at all on the other side. Oh, boy. He says, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I've kept the faith. I like that. Fought a good fight. He had a purpose. What fight are you engaged in? It's a spiritual battle. That's what it is. Amen. I, I, I try to keep things spiritual. I really do. It's hard at times. I try. I'm not perfect at it. I try. Let's, let's get the conversation back on the spiritual. What about you? Where are you going to spend eternity? Well, did you read that article? Yeah, I, I, I saw it, but let me ask you a question. Redirect. Re-engage. Paul had a purpose. Amen? What fight are you engaged in? You better pick your battles carefully. I've been so tempted as pastor to fight certain battles politically, but it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's tough. There's a great price tag for it financially. Thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm telling you. It's been tough. It's been tough. When you start telling people they can't gather, and the Bible gives, commands us to assemble together, and then you give all the retail sector more liberty than the faith gatherings, you've got a problem. You've got an inequity. It's inequitable. They did in the United States, I've already mentioned this before, the Supreme Court of the United States, some different states in America had complained, and what they did was they wanted the governors of those states put extreme restrictions on the churches, and it ended up Supreme Court of the United States. Supreme Court of the United States said this, we will give the churches the same restrictions as the retail. How about that? Why not? We have guaranteed rights in our quote-unquote constitution. Amen. That's, that's what, listen, it's, you say that's not in the Bible. I know it's not in the Bible. But we, the gathering, the word gatherings in there and assembly. That's what the word church means. It's an assembly. Amen. You see, you know, if it doesn't bother you that you couldn't assemble, I, I, I have some questions for you. There is something. There's, listen, it ought to bother you to no end that you could not assemble for two months. Serious. And I'm concerned because longer you're away, the longer you're locked down. There could be some casualties along the way. And I'm not disregarding any death casualties because of the pandemic, but let's, let's, let's be fair. Let's be fair about this. Amen? But they're not. They're not. There's something about faith gatherings. 
There is. That's where the hope is. We talk about mental, mental illness. Do you know the suicide rate's up? You can't lock down people for so long and not have that problem. You know what? People have spiritual needs. You have spiritual needs. They need to be met. How are you going to do that? Online is a one-way communication. Oh, maybe you can chat. It's not the same. Face-to-face -face is what you need. It's a, it's a battle. I fought, I have fighting this battle. So I say, is this the mountain that I want to fight on? I try to pick my battles carefully. I really do. I didn't. I didn't engage. It's hard. It's hard. Good fight. Fight a good fight. Strive lawfully, he said in 2 Timothy 2.5. A good fight. That's not the fight with your spouse and your kids or your neighbors or other Christians of different camps and circles. It's not, that's not the fight. Amen? The good fight. Why don't you get your energy and use that energy to get the gospel out, minister to other believers, preaching the word, getting the word, in season, out of season, faithful in all seasons. The gospel's a good fight. He says, I finished my course. Don't quit. Finish what you start. God's looking for finishers. Many people quit and give up just when the victory's around the corner. Man, I'll tell you, it's, it's, I, I've seen it. I've seen it before. Like I said, it came to pass. I actually wrote it down 456 times in the King James Version. It came to pass. It came to pass. It came to pass. It's not here to stay. Trust me. It will pass. Maybe not in the time you want it to pass. <laughs> I have kept the faith. I can't make others keep the faith, but I can make myself keep the faith. I'm trying to help people keep their faith and trust God and not quit on God. I think every one of us have the ability to deny the Lord, even as Peter did. If you think you can't, I think you, you're, you're thinking too highly of yourself. We all have that ability within us. Maybe some have not denied the Lord in word, but they surely denied the Lord by how they live. We've got too many of that. And last of all, verse 8, a crown is promised. Amen? Faithful in all seasons. You say, you got more to this mess? Yes, I do. That's why I said I can't do it in one session. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Listen, I'm telling you something. What an attitude for a man who's waiting on death row. He loves God so much. He went as far as he could for the Lord. And here, he's looking forward to after his execution. He says, <laughs> you know, if the Lord found me faithful, I love him. I love him. I love him so much. I've tried to be faithful to God. Maybe God will count me faithful, amen, and say, here, here's a crown, Amen. Praise God, a crown of righteousness. One of five that are specifically mentioned. There's probably more. They love his appearing. Are you loving his appearing? You know what? G Paul's looking for Jesus, amen? He's looking, for Titus 2.13, for that blessed hope. Amen, the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Man, I'll tell you. Listen, faithful in all seasons. Part one. Let's pray. Father, help us today. We need your help. We need your strength. God, bless and work. Lord God, you know the challenges that each and every one of us faces here today. You know, Lord God, uh, Father, the needs of each and every one that help us today. We pray for those, Lord God, who are lost to help them to come to that saving knowledge. Help them to open their hearts, their eyes to the gospel, the truth of your word. Help them to see their need for salvation. Help them not to trust in their own righteousness. Help them to trust in the righteousness of your son, Jesus Christ. Oh, God, open their eyes. Lord God, help them to act upon the light that you've already given them. Help not let, let their hearts be darkened. Lord God, please, God, help them. Help them this morning. And for believers, Lord God, help us, Lord God, to be faithful in all seasons of life. God, we need your help today. We need your help today. God, use us. Use us as a church in the Halifax area to affect not only here in Nova Scotia and Canada, but all over the world. Oh, God, help us today. Lord, we look to you. We trust you. Now, God, we pray that we would think and meditate upon what we've heard today. And God, again, just give us all those who are in service, in person, Lord God, safety as we all go our separate ways. And we'll trust you and thank you for we ask this in Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. God bless you all.